So this is a really common question, one that I've been asked a lot, thanks to those of you that have emailed in. What is photosynthesis? Well, it's a great question. It's absolutely critical to all living things. It's a crucial part of biology, and it's what we're going to talk about today. So in the food chains video, we talked about autotrophs and heterotrophs. And we learnt why really the sun is the main source of energy for all life. Let's recap those terms though. Autotrophs are organisms that are able to make their own complex organic compounds from simple inorganic substances. Really what we're talking about there is they make their own glucose. Heterotrophs are not able to make all of their own complex organic compounds from simple inorganic substances. And so heterotrophs get those complex organic compounds or food or glucose by eating or consuming or taking in other organisms and their products. So this lesson though, we're talking about photosynthesis, so we're gonna focus on autotrophs because most autotrophs are what we call photosynthetic autotrophs. And that means they use a process called photosynthesis to make their own complex organic compounds. And most of the photosynthetic autotrophs that we're talking about are plants. But some photosynthetic autotrophs are bacteria. A good example of that is blue-green algae or cyanobacteria which we find growing on waterways like rivers and lakes and streams. But as I said, most photosynthetic autotrophs are plants. All right, so let's have a look at a plant cell. Here we have a plant cell, a very, very basic diagram of one. It has a range of different organelles which we're already familiar with. The one that we're going to focus on for photosynthesis is, of course, chloroplasts. Here's lots of chloroplasts through this plant cell. They're not really that circle shape, which they appear to be in this diagram. They're more of an oval. Here's a more zoomed in diagram of a chloroplast. And you can see its various structures. And this is where photosynthesis takes place. Uh, also, we can have a look at a photo micrograph taken under an electron microscope of a chloroplast. This is what they actually look like. You notice that green colour. The green colour is coming from a photosynthetic pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is really important for trapping light energy to produce complex organic compounds. So let's have a look at how the photosynthesis process actually occurs inside of these chloroplasts. And also, because I did talk about bacteria before, if you're wondering how do some of those bacterial cells carry out photosynthesis when they don't have organelles, great question. They carry out photosynthesis just simply in the cytoplasm of the cell. So that's a bit of a difference between photosynthetic bacterial cells and photosynthetic plant cells. So put very simply, the process that takes place in photosynthesis is a transformation of energy, a really important transformation of energy, the transformation of light energy into chemical energy. And of course, the light energy that we're talking about is usually sunlight. I'll just put this big, huge sun in over here. And the chemical energy that we're referring to is glucose, C6, H12, O6, a complex organic compound. So let's actually have a look at how light energy can be used to turn simple inorganic substances into complex organic compounds like glucose. Well, first of all, what are the simple inorganic substances that get used to make glucose? Well, they're carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water, two simple inorganic substances, combined can produce sugar, glucose, 
and oxygen. That's a simple summary of the reaction that takes place in photosynthesis. Now just bear in mind that is absolutely a summary of what's happening. It's, a, it's been simplified for you, but it's carbon dioxide plus water makes sugar and oxygen. But there's two really important factors that are needed to make sure this happens. One of those, as we've already talked about, is light energy. Without light energy, that process simply cannot take place. And the other one is a photosynthetic pigment to absorb the light energy. And without that photosynthetic pigment, the light energy can't be trapped and it can't be used. The most common photosynthetic pigment is chlorophyll. We put those conditions above and below the arrow to show that this reaction won't occur unless we have those two factors present. Now, you're also going to want to know the balanced chemical equation for what's going on here. Rather than just the worded equation, we want to see the chemical formulas for how many carbon dioxide molecules, how many water molecules, produce how many sugar molecules and how many oxygen molecules. So, the summary is 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O produces one glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. That's a summary of the reaction. Six CO2 plus six H2O gives us one glucose, C6H12O6, plus six O2. That is our balanced chemical equation. I haven't gone through how that was balanced, but it's balanced because we've got the same number of carbon atoms on the left as we do on the right. Same number of oxygen atoms on the left as we do on the right. And the same number of hydrogen atoms as we do on the right. It's a balanced chemical equation. Hopefully you've worked out that still there is two things missing. It's the things or the factors that are needed for the reaction to occur, which are of course light energy and a photosynthetic pigment. The best one or the most common one is chlorophyll. And that's why I've got it there in green to remind you that green is the colour of that photosynthetic pigment chlorophyll. So that's our balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. And remember we're showing the two conditions required for the reaction to occur, light energy and chlorophyll. Something to bear in mind is that this is a type of reaction that requires energy to take place. It requires light energy in order for the reaction to occur. Because it takes in energy or requires energy, we call this type of reaction an endothermic reaction. And I've underlined the EN because an easy way to remember that it's what an endothermic reaction is, is that energy enters the reaction. Whereas the other type of reaction is exothermic that gives off energy and energy exits the reaction. Photosynthesis is endothermic. It requires energy to enter the reaction and that's a good way to remember what endothermic means. Now, a final point to remember when we're talking about photosynthesis and food chains and how important producers or autotrophs are, is to remember that autotrophs aren't making glucose and carrying out photosynthesis to provide food for the rest of the food chain. They're actually making this glucose for themselves. They need to use glucose as an energy source for themselves. And it just so happens that they produce excess and store it as this polysaccharide called starch. And then it's possible for other organisms to consume plants and then use that starch as a source of energy. That's where heterotrophs come in. But it's just important to remember that autotrophs do not produce glucose for other organisms, they produce it for themselves. Because all organisms use glucose in processes called aerobic respiration and fermentation. 
and they are the next two videos that you're going to want to check out because what we want to know now is once we've produced glucose or been able to obtain glucose how do we then use it as an energy source we need to break it down we can either break it down in aerobic respiration or in fermentation so check out the video called what is aerobic respiration and what is fermentation so hopefully that's answered your question on what is photosynthesis. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.